What's up everyone, this is Zach Hampel and check this out. I got a comment recently on YouTube, you can see it right here, from someone who said, can we see your game used bat collection? So let's do it, I can't wait to show you this stuff. And I've gotten other comments from people asking about how many bats I've gotten, who I've gotten the first one from. Now I should specify that these are not all game used. Some of them are, but there are a few that may have only been used during practice and then I have two right here, which I got from A-Rod, which were never used at all. Now, I'll tell you about the A-Rod bats in just a few minutes. I'm gonna take you through it from this side. I have them lined up in the order that I got them. So let's just begin with this one right here. And, okay, let me just say quickly, these are all bats that belong to Major League players, and I got them all at Major League Stadiums, starting with this one. So I'll show you a closer look right here at the barrel, F. Seganal. The F stands for Fernando. He came up with the Montreal Expos in the late 90s and actually closed out his career briefly with the Yankees. I got this from him in 1999 in Atlanta at Turner Field. He used this bat and cracked it. You can see right here this crack that runs through the handle and over that Rawlings logo on the trademark. And I was down by the dugout late in the game just trying to get a baseball. And when the game ended, this bat was unexpectedly slid to me across the dugout roof. So I was absolutely overjoyed and stunned. I'd been to hundreds of games in my life up to that point. Never even came close to a bat. I figured you had to have some sort of insane connection to the players in order to get one. But as this bat proves, and some of the others, it can in fact just be a totally random thing to get a bat. So let me take you through some more of them. This one right here, I got seven years later. 1999 for the first one, 2006 for this. Got this at Shea Stadium from Cliff Floyd. You can see his name here on the barrel and it's partially rubbed off, which doesn't bother me. That just shows that it's authentic, right? Now if you look just a little bit away from his name, you can see that there's a smudge on the barrel, which is clearly the result of Floyd hitting a baseball and having the ink from the stamping smudge off onto the wood. So that's really neat. You can see the old Hickory logo right there. And if you look at the knob of the bat, it says Old Hickory there as well. You can see that there's a number 30 drawn underneath the old Hickory logo, which is Cliff Floyd's uniform number. And you can see it drawn into the hollowed out portion of the bat on the other end by the barrel. So this bat is fully intact. The one from Seganol is cracked. And I guess I should also point out that this bat from Seganol, if you can see it, has his uniform number, it's a little blurry, number 19 written on there as well. So. Let's move on over to this bat, which I also got in 2006, late in the season. Uh, you can see there's a lot of marks on the barrel from where this hit baseballs. The name on the bat is Ramon Hernandez, a 15-year veteran. He was a catcher. You can see just how cracked it is on the handle. And in fact, there's no handle at all. This is the one bat that I have with an actual piece missing. So, got this in Baltimore at Camden Yards after batting practice, standing by the dugout, totally random. A ball boy gave this to me. I didn't even ask for it. So, basically, that's the story of that. Um, I remember that an usher approached me right after and referred to this as a quote-unquote weapon and said that I wasn't allowed to basically walk around the stadium with this all night. And so, he made me go to the fan assistance desk and check it. And of course, I was able to pick it up after the game, so that was kind of funny. <clears throat> and by the way, I used to have a blog that I wrote for years and years. I wrote about nearly every game I attended for about a decade, including blog entries about a lot of the games where I got these bats. So I will link to some of those blog entries in the description below this video. So when you're done watching this, you got some more stuff to check out, so definitely take a look. Let's move along to this one which I got two years later in 2008. So you can see what it looks like, a Rawlings bat, and the name on the barrel is Greg Norton. He played for 13 years in the majors, six different teams, closed it out with the Braves, 
and that's who he was with when I got this back from him at Citizens Bank Park. And you can see that his uniform number 20 is written onto the knob of the bat. And on the other end, there's a number 20 as well. So this bat is fully intact. It's not cracked at all. And once again, I was just down by the dugout after BP and he saw me standing there and slid it to me. So thank you very much, Greg Norton. We will skip ahead two more years to this bat, another old hickory model. This one is all black, and you can see what it looks like kind of right here. The name on the barrel is Austin Jackson. So this was right toward the end of his rookie year. This bat is not cracked, fully intact, and I got this at Camden Yards in Baltimore after the game, didn't ask for it, it was just randomly slid to me across the dugout roof. And you can see on both ends of the bat, both the knob and on the end of the barrel is Austin Jackson's uniform number 14. So there is that one. Now we move ahead one more year to 2011. And this is really one of my favorites. I'm just so happy to have this one. I'll give you a look right here at the bat and you might be able to tell that it's autographed, right? You see this? I'll show you that close up in just a moment. But first check out the name on the bat, Mike Nickius. And underneath it says New York Mets. So in 2011, he was a backup catcher on the Mets, really didn't get a whole lot of playing time. Um, and the story behind this is that I caught his first major league home run. In 2011, in April, left field at City Field. And long story short, I gave that ball to him after the game I hadn't asked for anything except to actually be the one who handed it to him. I just wanted to shake his hand, say congrats, maybe get a photo. So he came out of the clubhouse in his full uniform and presented me with this bat unexpectedly. So you can see what he signed right here. It says, Zach, great hands, best wishes, Mike Nickius. He was so cool, we chatted for a few minutes. I told him about my collection and he was genuinely intrigued. He kept asking me questions about it and he remembered me for the rest of his career after that. So that was pretty cool. On the knob of the bat, you can see his uniform number 13 with the Mets colors, orange and blue. And then at the other end of the bat, hollowed out, this is a very deep hollow. You can see it right in there written number 13. So Mike Nicky has only hit one more home run after the one that I caught. Um, but he was still one of my favorite players, even though he's not a household name. And I just think back on that moment very fondly. And again, I wrote a nice long blog entry if you want to know basically how it works to deal with security when you catch a home run that the player wants back, check out the blog entry in the description below this video. Now, speaking of snagging a baseball that the player wants back, that brings us to these two bats. A-Rod, his 3,000th hit. I'll hold them up for a quick look, and of course I'll zoom in and show you closer. But I think by now most of you know that I did snag that baseball that A-Rod hit. I got that baseball, number 3000, in 2015. I ended up giving it to him. The Yankees donated to charity. I also got to ask for some stuff, and among the items that I got were these two bats. So you can see how he autographed them for me. On one of them, he wrote, Zach, Nice catch, Alex Rodriguez, number 13. And the other, he just wrote Alex Rodriguez, number 13, and then the number 3,000. So, look, I won't go through all the details of that story. Once again, there's a huge blog entry that I wrote about the whole thing, so check that out if you're interested in more details. Oh, but I should just show you a quick shot of A-Rod's name on the barrel, you can see. It's branded right in there. It says New York Yankees P72. I guess that must be the model number of the bat. And you can see on the knob of the bats what else is stamped right there as well. So I don't even know how much these two A-Rod bats are worth, but they're not for sale and I'm just so happy to have them. So let's keep moving. We're getting toward the end here. Stop rolling. Thank you. Okay, so this one. Andres Blanco on the Phillies. I got this one also in 2015, not too long after the whole A-Rod thing. At City Field, Blanco cracked this bat. You can see the crack right there. You can see all the shiny pine tar on the handle. Tucci Lumber. 
That's the name of the company. And then of course, on the barrel, you can see Andres Blanco's name with some other stuff that's stamped there, some nicks, some scuffs, some smudges where he hit baseballs and the ink from the stamps came off. You can also see on the knob of the bat, there's a Tucci Lumber logo. I got this one actually as a result of a connection that I had to someone on the Phillies who worked with the equipment who had told me ahead of time that if one of the Phillies players broke their bat at this game, that he would arrange for someone in the dugout to give it to me after the game. And the whole game, I was just hoping for a cracked bat and it wasn't happening, it wasn't happening. And then Juris Familia, the Mets closer, came into pitch in the ninth inning. Andres Blanco cracked this one. So I hurried down to the dugout after the game and sure enough, the promise was delivered and I got this bat. It actually still smells like pine tar three years after I got it. And we have some more pine tar and another game used crack bat right here. So this one belonged to Jonathan VR on the Brewers. You can see his name right there on the barrel. I love this shiny gray color. You can see all the pine tar over the trademark of the bat. It kind of looks like there's too much pine tar on this thing, but hey, I'm not the commissioner. I don't make the rules. You can see the splintering and the cracking down toward the handle. You can see the remnants of some tape that had been around the handle to help Jonathan VR with his grip. I'm not sure why he pulled that off. And then you can see on the knob of the bat, his uniform number five, it says Brewers right there. I got this one in San Francisco at AT&T Park in 2016. I was sitting in the second row behind the dugout on the first base side and all of a sudden, I just saw a bat basically being passed up over the dugout roof. It didn't even register that someone had cracked their bat. No one else was even really paying attention. Half the seats were empty, and I just, I just grabbed it as fast as I could. So that's the story of this one. My videographer was with me that day. He did not get a shot of me acquiring the bat because neither of us were expecting it. It just happened so fast but I'll link to that video in the description and you can see me holding the bat in the seats talking about it like a minute after I got it. So that is the 10 major league bats that I have collected over the years. But wait, there's one more. Did you happen to notice this right here? Oh, what's this? We have a little hidden something for you. Now this doesn't really belong in with these bats. It's in like a category unto itself, but where else am I gonna show this thing but in a video about my baseball bat collection? So here's just a quick look at it, and I will zoom in and show you closer in just a moment. I wanna just say first that this bat was made by my friend Todd Cook. He makes bats as a hobby, and I've gotten to know Todd and his two great kids, Tim and Kellen, what's up guys if you're watching this? They just go to a ton of games and they catch baseballs too. And so Todd made this bat and I'm gonna show you a closer look right here. You can see that using artwork resembling Scrabble tiles, he spelled out my name, Zach Hampel, and added the word ball hawk so that all the letters touch and intersect. And he also tracked down a signature of mine on the internet, unbeknownst to me, and he branded that into the bat as well. And you can see his unofficial company's bat logo right here on the trademark, Cook and Son Bats. So I've never used this thing. I've never used any of these bats as far as actually playing baseball with them. That would be crazy. I don't wanna break them. I don't wanna mark them all up. So this is just a very special bat that I keep tucked away and it's just nice to have it like all this other stuff. So that's pretty much it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. You know, in addition to the baseballs, I collect a lot of stuff. The bats, as you can see. I did a video recently on my baseball cap collection. I'll link to that for you too. I have lineup cards, I have autographs. Maybe I'll do a video on all that stuff. My baseball gloves. I even got a glove from a player one time. So stay tuned. You might see videos on all this stuff, but for right now, I will just say thank you for watching this one.